can't have a little bit of faith. I mean, if you'd have been here six weeks ago, we'd be looking at a yard and a pasture that was burnt up and the flesh sides wanting to know why in the world you can't get rain and other people are getting rain. Um, but the, the side of you that has that faith knows that he brings it in the right time. And now we're staring at a yard that I mowed Thursday and needs to be mowed again. So things can change really quick in his time. Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversation podcast, where we talk about all things related to ranching by connecting you to peer ranchers and industry leaders to improve the profitability of your operation and your lifestyle. Now, if you are looking for a community of ranchers, sign up for my monthly Rancher Mind events. Rancher Mind events are mastermind events for ranchers. You join a Zoom link and you sit down and have a conversation with other ranchers and industry leaders about specific topics that help you improve your operation and face the challenges that we face as an industry as a whole. Now, if you want immediate ranch management advice, go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com slash newsletter and sign up. When you sign up, I will send you a free PDF with 22 ranch management tips from the ranching gurus who have been on my show and poured out their knowledge for all to hear. With that, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram by following Cattle Convos. You can connect with me there or you can go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com to find anything you may need. I'm excited to meet you and let's get on with the show. So tell me tell me about your background in the beef industry because all I know is really the Red Angus side of things. I mean, I know a few other things. So talk about how you got started with beef. I mean, that's mostly where it started. Um, I mean, it's basically just all been Red Angus, really. Um, so my first introduction, I can, my first introduction into the Red Angus breed would have been through one of my high school ag teachers, Monty Williams, who was a breeder years ago. Uh, still has a few. He's gotten more into the Red Brangus deal. Um, and that's where I first got into Red Angus, probably mid 80s, or first got introduced to them. Um, we didn't we didn't ranch a lot growing up, uh, really didn't ranch any. We'd ended up moving to town um, as when I was a little bitty. So, Grew up probably 30 miles, 25, 30 miles, kind of southwest of here, uh, in what was a little town, but it's a quite bigger town now. But um, then once this is, the place we're on now would be my wife's family's place uh, that they've been on since the mid 80s. I uh, ran a bunch of commercial cows until about 1991 when my wife decided she was going to get a show heifer <laughs> so same ag teacher introduced them to red angus uh, they go to a cell up north to get a show heifer and maybe maybe one to keep it company and my father-in-law in the way that he usually was accustomed to doing and when he's in he's in came back with 10 heifers <laughs> so that was the start of red angus on 3k um, so that's really kind of how we got our start here on the ranch. Uh, me and my wife ended up, we had always been around each other, done a lot of things together uh, while she was in school. Uh, some call me an old man because she is oh, about four and a half years younger than me. So I would see her around when she was in school and stuff and, and that helped her dad do some things and just help both of them with with different things on here and showing and stuff that they were doing. So we uh, we kind of reunited, got back together about 97. Kind of been here ever since, so. Yeah, and for those listening, we're here in Texas. So I was able to come south for this one. Now, Kylie, we're kind of gonna base this conversation off of some prior conversations that we've had and really what stuck out to me is you said that 
you have to have faith as a farmer or rancher and faith is something that's been talked about on the show but never really like focused on so can you elaborate like what you meant when you said you have to have faith as a farmer or rancher well when you brought up that topic um it probably was it probably terrified and relieved me at the same time because um you know when you get on a public forum such as this to talk about faith uh, I think what sticks out to me most importantly is before I get on that part but the part about the importance to me is making sure whatever message I give is something someone could really use if they heard it in the head um, and it relieved me because I think you've had a lot of people on here who could talk cattle industry, industry stuff better than I could. So, uh, and I like talking about Jesus from time to time. So, uh, I, it kind of stoked me when you brought that up. But, but the part about where I said you've got to have faith to be a farmer or rancher is just, I don't know how you could see a crop grow or a calf born. I mean, a I mean, to watch a first calf ever have a calf get up and they both somehow understand what needs to be done for that calf to get up, get the colostrum and flourish is if, if you think somebody else isn't involved in that, it's just beyond me. I mean, it's just, and just seeing that, being able to witness, seeing, you know, the birth of something um, no matter what species you have is you know we see it from time to time as we become parents you know and it hits a little harder you know because you know we, we get numb to the fact of seeing cat, calves born or what have you horses born whatever it is but um, if you can't have a little bit of faith I mean if you'd have been here six weeks ago we'd be looking at a yard and a pasture that was burnt up and the flesh sides wanting to know why in the world you can't get rain and other people are getting rain. Um, but the, the side of you that has to have faith knows that he brings it in the right time. And now we're staring at a yard that I mowed Thursday and needs to be mowed again. So things can change really quick in his time. I was going to say it does look nice to see some green grass out there for you. Uh, most people wouldn't, yeah, if, if you lived far away and listen to me talk about how dry it was for a while and then you showed up you're like you're such a liar <laughs> <laughs> I really I wasn't because it really was nothing like this two weeks ago so. so Kylie you said earlier that when you give a message you want it to make sense so for anyone who hasn't heard it or um, is new to their faith life so how do you lead others in their faith journeys what does that look like as a part of your life but you know, um, me, I've typically always worked a lot with, with youth, younger, younger people, uh, just cause I feel drawn to them. Um, but we've done some adult stuff and, and worked with people, uh, given the gospel to people who, who had no prior knowledge of it, you know, and then even in the Bible, it talks about having the childlike faith. Um, and it's not in the sense of your age, it's in the sense of your knowledge of, of what he's, what he's done, what the Bible says. And, um, you know, and it's just like anything, you just start off light. I mean, you start off with something that's easy to read, something easy to understand. Um, you know, and just, I mean, the, the whole story is that God sent Jesus here to live on the earth as a man show us the perfect simple sinless way to live you know and he did that for 30 years a ministry of three years and 33 he's crucified and dies and grabs, rises again in three days to cover our sins on the cross um, but there's a lot more to it it can get a lot deeper than that but you know um, the book of John's a good place for somebody to start if they don't know anything um, reaching out and calling somebody it's a really good way to do it you know but um you know i've just i try to keep it simple um i know a lot of folks especially if they're if they're later in life uh 
coming around to to learning about Christ um, you can get some thoughts that the world has put in your head that how's this make sense you know and uh, you have to live it you have to, you have to just feel the Holy Spirit in you and you just there's things you live you'll see you'll see it in your daily walk I've given some things up to God before that made no sense in the world, and uh, He just takes care of it, you know. And I don't mean it, I don't mean necessarily through a like, hell, I'm just going to pray about this and never even think about it again. It'll, I'll just show up and magically it'll be taken care of. Because sometimes it's us using our gifts to accomplish whatever we're needing. Mm -hmm. You know, He makes a path for us, uh, but sometimes it does require a little bit of work on our side too. We have to move our feet down that we path. We have to move our feet. So, can you talk a little bit more about what you think living out your faith looks like as a farmer or a rancher? Because there is going to church and then there is surrendering yourself to say, God, I'm handing this over to you. Right. You know, and I think as adults, sometimes that's a lot of what makes people question others. Um, you know, it's the guy you see, the guy or gal you see in church, or know they go to church on Sunday, and you see them six other days of the week, and you think, is that really working for them? <laughs> um, and by no means, I'm not perfect. Um, I, I, I fall short every day. Uh, there's times that I probably am not at my A game. Um, you know, for me. Matthew 5, 16 is kind of my, that's my jam. Um, let your light shine before others so they'll see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Um, I got some friends that I listen to, some that do a podcast, and uh, and it's faith-based. A bunch of dad, you know, livestock dads that do a podcast. And for people like us that aren't perfect and, you know, we struggle each day from time to time and, uh, it's like every chance you get, show people the gospel, and when necessary, use words. So, it's just to live out where your actions show that you don't do it for you, um, that you know there's someone higher than you. Um, and I've had others. I mean, I've had the example from others that probably don't even know they were an example. Um, but you can just tell generally you can you can just tell when somebody's walking the walk and not just talking it and i try to be better at that so well i think a huge part of that like you said is no one's perfect right hey folks let's hear from our friends at neogen you are working to preserve the ground for the next generation shouldn't your cow herd be built for the future too Neogen is the industry leader in beef cattle genomic testing. They are proud to have brought the first genomic profile to the market, and this is called Igenity Beef. Igenity Beef is a genomic test that provides commercial cattle producers easy to understand data to make genomic selections to advance their herd with each generation. Igenity Beef is designed for crossbred commercial cattle, utilizing the herd's very own DNA to predict genetic merit in your herd. Igenity Beef provides 17 critical traits on a 1 through 10 scale that aids in selection and management of commercial females and provide marketing opportunities to build your herd for the next generation. To learn more about how Igenity Beef can aid you in selection, management, and marketing opportunities of each calf crop and your herd, go to neogen.com or call 877-443-6489. Again, that is neogen.com. So how would you say, you know, really living out your faith has impacted you when you view yourself as a livestock producer and the actions you take and working through some of those good and tough moments? You know, I think for me, um, I guess <clears throat> the biggest part is knowing that 
if it's all gone tomorrow, if if he <clears throat> has a different path for me, it's okay. I mean, it's okay. Um, you know, obviously we do it for what most of us view is we do it for a profit. <laughs> uh, most of the time we try. <laughs> um, but um, I think the part that's that impacts it the most is just knowing that just like the drought and just like when you get in a jam on something and it's like, why did this happen? I mean, why does the good one die? You know, you kick it around, kick rocks for a minute and you just, you just move on because I mean, that's just, that was part of his plan. And I don't really know how probably to explain it the right way, but it's just knowing that, knowing and trusting that, that he's going to take care of it all. And, just like the rain it's gonna you know we we got the rain we needed to give us some grass and and probably help us get another cutting because right now I don't have enough hay to get through the winter but I will now you know so the next one we're gonna be able to run some water and fill tanks up so and we knew we knew we just I mean sure every drought ends up a rainstorm but the other part's just knowing that he's going to bring it when I need it because we were at a time where everybody's watching their cattle. You know, do I win my calves? Do I, you know, what do you do? And you're watching every day, you look at them, you're going, okay, because I got to hit that sweet spot where the calves don't get sucked down and the cows don't get sucked down too bad where I can't get them back. And you just try to judge it to wean them when you need to. And then all of a sudden he says, don't worry about it. Yeah, you talked about trust there, and I want to go down that road. So you talked, you touched on, you know, turning to the gospel. But what are some other ways, or maybe can you expand more on turning to the gospel and how that works to establish that trust? Because without, you I mean you need trust as you live out your faith. Well, <clears throat> and I think it. Sure, we, we we trust others in different ways, and we think of it think of it in a different sense. You know, on how much we trust people we do business with, but why do we trust some of those people? You know, um, and it's generally because we've built a relationship, right? You know, you don't just trust somebody the first time you do something with them, but as you've had that relationship with them, you build a trust where it's like. When he says he's going to do this, I know he's going to do this. And it's the same way with Christ. Is this, if we if we will explore, if we will dig into him, um, whether that be getting in a Bible study, just getting in the Bible itself, if, if you feel like you can navigate that on your own. Because um, I promise if you, if you just dig in and read, he's going to speak to you. And, you know, it's when you get that, gut feeling it's not just you're not just hungry God's talking to you I mean you know it's the Holy Spirit mashing on you that this is pay attention and it's finding the right people to, to talk to about Christ and, and finally submitting to that he's our Lord and Savior and that he you know he did die on the cross to cover our sins and it doesn't mean we just get to sin for free now. It means we're supposed to try to live a sinless life as he did and, and follow him. And, and that's the trust. You know, it's faith's not, faith's not, it's not just believing in God. It's, it's trusting that he'll do what he says he'll do. And the more you study his word, the more you'll realize that you've built a relationship with a heavenly father that will never He'll, he'll never not be there. So it's just the same as building a relationship with anybody else. It's just the most important relationship you'll ever build. Absolutely. So <clears throat> taking that first step to join a Bible study, dive in, I, that's a big step. It I mean, you know, you think, you look at reading as a 
some would call it a small action, but it is a big step to make that decision. So what advice do you have for people who are trying to find that community? You know, I mean, obviously the first step would be probably getting in a good Bible church. Um, I mean, going and meeting with other believers because um, it's you're just not going to roll up on very many Bible studies, you know, that <laughs> people have access to, you know. But once you get to trying to build that relationship and people, you've reached out to someone else or you just, as hard as it can be sometimes, and I know because I watch people do it and, and I've actually done it myself going to visit other churches. I mean, it can be intimidating, you know, but... I think once we know we need something else in our life besides just what we feel like we can take care of, you know, the, the easiest way to do it is just to to give in and, and start, you know, start out at the church, find some other believers that are like-minded, have some interest that you have, because um, it is easier to, to hang out and study the Bible with guys you got something in common with. And then you'll also discover that you have more in common with people you might not think you did have things in common with. So um, it's a lot like when he, when the storm, when he was calm the seas and the storm and he told Peter to get out of the boat. I mean, sometimes you just got to get out of the boat, you know, and, and keep your eyes fixed on him and, and what you're wanting to accomplish. And, Part of it's just going, part of it's just digging in and putting aside our own feelings to to get out of our comfort zone, I guess you could say. Because it's not always comfortable. I mean, it's not comfortable going to the get-together that your wife wants you to go to that you really don't want to go to. You know, <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> you, know you can be intimidated by a lot of things. So it's, but being intimidated by what should be the most comforting thing for you, that's just ourselves getting in the way. We overcomplicate a lot of things. We overcomplicate lots of things, yeah. So can you touch kind of on living out your faith in the sense of using your God-given talents? Like mine or anybody in general? Anyone's. Anyone's. Um, I think the first part of that is, well, I can use my family as an example. I mean, you know, I, so I've gotten the honor to marry quite a few people. Um, I am a licensed minister in the state of Texas. Um, I guess really anywhere if you, if we just put it to what the good Lord says we can do. Um, and it's probably not anything I imagined I would do in life um, being able not only to marry people the hard part of doing some funerals um, but actually getting up and preaching the word on Sundays um, I would have never imagined doing it there's probably surprisingly some Red Angus people out there that wouldn't know that they've probably been a part of making me step out of my comfort level too. And some of all this was happening at the same time. Um, but, you know, that's one of those talents that, you know, somehow, I mean, I would have never imagined that God wanted me to do something like that. But, you know, we ended up doing it, you know, and I've got, you know, like my two girls, um, most would think they're probably polar opposites and they are, you know, um, two ranch kids, uh, once just started her journey into more than likely genetics and livestock judging as a freshman in college this year, which has been whew, a struggle itself, <laughs> you know, and then we've got my oldest who, who, finally embraced the fact that you know 
her talents were leading her into cosmetology stuff and and it may have caught me by surprise but you see her really excel at that and you see that how much she loves doing that and hopefully if she hears this she won't take it wrong but she's a lot better doing hair and makeup and stuff like that than probably working with lifestyle you know because that's what she's supposed to be doing um and it's fun it's fun to watch it it's fun to see God work in other people's lives um you know, I've seen others that have different spiritual gifts. And, and it, as you get into studying the Bible, you know, you'll get into, you can get into, dig into 1 Corinthians and really dig into spiritual gifts. And I got a pretty cool Bible study that has a spiritual gift test. And you kind of can answer your questions that really show you probably what your gifts are that areas you need to dig into and it's no different than you you're using <laughs> yours try to <laughs> yeah well discover them and <laughs> get out of your own way and use them because <laughs> right, right. yeah. we all know you I mean you were nervous at the first oh you know, I, I mean, my first junior at Angus not event, to flip this on you yeah no that's fine Shasha is doing some stuff well that, yeah so background Kylie's known me for <laughs> ever I don't know I don't really remember the first time I met you but I've known yeah. I've known Kylie a long time and I was shy Shay like a mic anything I would start bawling like so hey, yeah I still do so I'm <laughs> <laughs> well I still do too but you know I was always told uh, Dr. Field always told me it's okay it right. just means it matters yeah. so yeah, wow. Um, I guess, do you have anything else you want to add? I mean, we can kind of wrap up, but do you have any last tips or advice or any last thoughts you'd want to share with anyone out there listening? Because I'm sure those listening, everyone, everyone's always in their own place on their faith journey. Sure. So, You know, I think the big thing is if, he, if you've ever really just wondered about it, just dig into it you know um, you hear people say it and I don't say it this way very often because I don't I'm not worried that it's not true but what's the worst that can happen is that I'll follow God my whole life my earthly journey I'm following Christ trying to be a good person set a good example what's the worst thing that can happen is that Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe there's not. But I know there is. So it's like, I don't usually put it that way, but I've heard some say, what's the downfall if, even if it's not true, you're, you've been a good human your whole life. Um, I wouldn't risk it. Because I know it's true. And I know there's going to be a decision. And there's going to be a time and a place that we answer and um, so <clears throat> I said my 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 in, in Matthew <laughs> um, Matthew let 5, your light 16. shine but also in Matthew in chapter 9 you'll find where he says get away from me I never knew you and he's going to say that to people that think they know him so I'm not Not, <laughs> not everybody will make it. And there's people here that think they're doing enough to make it. And that's probably the last part of what drives me is that I want everybody I know to have heard the message and to make it. Because um, I live in Texas and it gets really hot. I can't imagine going to hell and it being worse. Because <laughs> summer's <laughs> bad. <laughs> so I don't want to take the chance. But, you know, it's 
and if anybody anybody wants to reach out to Shay and discuss faith, wants to find Christ, she can put you in touch with me. I don't want to talk to anybody. Might do. This is nerve wracking, but <laughs> <laughs> but I will definitely talk about Jesus anytime anybody wants to talk about. It. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today, Kylie. I appreciate you opening up and sharing about faith because that's something that's been very important to me and I know I've got a lot of listeners out there too. Well, thanks for asking because I was very excited to do it. Nervous to do it but very excited to do it. It was on faith <laughs> <laughs> because I enjoy talking about it and I think that's part of what I'm supposed to be doing. I mean that's part of that's probably the reason I have the comfort in wherever he takes my journey he takes my journey. We'll raise okay. cows as long as we can. Absolutely. You never know. Never. We're not supposed to know. Nope. <laughs> All right. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.